Okay. Uh, so we can start, right? Yes. 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 Yeah. Good morning, everyone. So we had, since it is a peak time to think about water and saving water and using water in wherever possible in whatever way. So we have organized this gray water treatment systems treatment. Uh, so uh, in biome, we do uh, basically on, we work on, work with water in different uh, aspects like uh, rainwater harvesting, groundwater recharge, and also the gray water treatment is also a part of it. Okay. Yeah. So, so when it comes to water, what is wastewater? First, the wastewater is whatever we, uh, which comes out of our house as a waste after using it. We use the fresh water in the kitchen, in the bathroom, in the toilet, in the kitchen sinks, and also uh, we wash outside and all. The water which goes out is wastewater. So what are the types of waste uh, water we get? So that is one is gray water, black water, and effluent. Usually, we are, today we'll be talk, talking more about gray water. This is like... It has less of any uh, chemicals and uh, one second, just hold on. So sorry, there was a noise around, so I had to lock the door. <coughs> Okay, uh, so the gray water is what we usually get from our uh, kitchens, wash basins, bathroom, and all that. The black water is the next uh, from the toilet, which which is splashed, and also sometimes it can be kitchen from the kitchen sinks where it where it will have a lot of solid waste and a lot of oil, all that. That is considered as black water, and so usually this in general. This go uh, this both of it get mixed and it goes to the seepage, where the BWSSP treats it in uh, its own uh, STP systems. But we can consider it. We can also do it in our house, treating this wastewater and use it. We'll see that uh, in the next slides. So the next is effluent. This is very. It takes lot of energy and effort to treat this because it, it comes from industries and contains lot of uh, chemicals uh, and different type of uh, chemicals. And sometimes we also see like it gets formed in the lakes outside and all. This is effluent from the industries. So when, uh, since we are talking only about the gray water today, what all we should keep in mind when we are treating gray water? The first one comes is like the untreated gray water should not be get let into the deep pits. Deep pits, uh, because we also see the uh, soap pits in and around many places in Bangalore where they don't have the underground sewage uh, system. So they make the shallow pits of about uh, five, 10 feet and they let this uh, wastewater into that. So it should not go deep as like 20, 30 feet or uh, any open well nearby that is, which is not, which does not have water. Let uh, let into that. No, it should not be done. So the next is we should we should try to we should use only the natural soaps or detergents mm -hmm. in using uh, for the bathing or washing clothes and utensils because this will this uh, for this method it is necessary. And uh, gray water it should not come when we are after the treatment the water what uh, which we'll be using how we are using it we'll, we can use it for flushing we can use it for gardening for when we are using it for gardening we should make sure that it should not be irrigated to the root crops like uh, if you are, if you are growing a carrot beetroot those things it should not it cannot be used and also some green salads like a green edible, which we eat raw. 
like coriander or uh, any of that sort they it, it cannot be used so and also then uh, the next is it cannot be used in sprinklers because again the same reason it will put up or get deposited on the green uh, leaves and all then the you will have to clean it very much so there also it cannot be used and it cannot be let into the pool or where it get water locked then it might lead to any some uh, um, contamination and it starts stinking over the place so in this manner in this so system, the KSPCB, the government has set up some rules, some standards for this. What should be the standard of after treatment? What should be the standard? Because even for the drinking water or any water, we have the water test standards, right? What should be the pH level? What should be the TDS? What is the um, turbidity and all that? Similarly, it will be little higher side. It can be a little higher side. Uh, for the uh, treated grey water. So how do we approach it? The approaches are uh, three. It goes in several methods. The basic are like physical, physical uh, treatment that involves sedimentation, like solid particles get settled in the in the system where you store it, and then if there is foam developed, that that should be removed. And it is it is led for aeration and then filtration. These are the physical method which involves which does not involve any of the power power consumption or less um, cost. And then is the chemical one. This uh, these also this involves some chemicals involved in it. That neutralization, adding of chlorine. Chlorine here uh, just to make it clear the chlorine. Okay, should be added when you are using for the flushing. But when you are using it for the gardening or other things, it need not be added. Right? And then uh, chlorine or ozone is added in the chemical system. And the third one goes to biological, which is like uh, aerobic and anaerobic systems are there. So, uh, when it comes to the method of treatment, th here also there are several methods, uh, sewage treatment. There are different technologies, sewage treatment plants. We see every apartment or layout, they have their own setup of sewage treatment, which will have various stages of treatment. And the next is DVATS. DVATS is decentralized wet wastewater treatment system. Basically, it is treated with the plants and uh, which absorbs the nutrients in the water and it is led for aeration and there's a portion for it to settle the solid particles. So this involves in, this will be there in DVATS. And the third one is banana circles. This is very simple, like it can be used in farms or even if you have a large garden space where you can plant some banana tree, banana plants or coconut tree. It, it can be a shallow bowl kind of a structure where you can let the let this water directly into that. But there should be a lot of mulch so that no germs develop in that. Germs, I mean, uh, mosquitoes breeding or any other things happen there. So this mulching will be above the, on the ground. Uh, above it so water goes below that because the mulching will be floating on that so what are the stages in uh, wastewater treatment the primarily in the wastewater there's a lot of uh, solids usually solids in it and so in the first step we should remove that solids in the kitchen sink there be small sediments right uh, food waste and all that should be filtered first and the second stage is some dissolved salts or sugar all those things whatever the dissolved without non-chemical sediments that will get absorbed in the second stage and third one goes to like uh, the third step is oxid oxidization or it is led for aeration 
And the next step is like tertiary. When you are going for the tertiary treatment, then it will be like um, removing of non-biogrid degradable pollutants. And that will take, that will be the tertiary treatment where it is called the, uh, what, what we usually do is in the secondary, only we do up to the secondary treatment, right? This is good for using for flushing and uh, gardening. But the tertiary treatment, it treats up to your portable water level. So this needs a lot of effort and uh, different stages are there in this. So accord, in according to this, the PWSSP has set up a lot of uh, rules for that regulations and guidelines. So the basic guideline, the first one is for the residential buildings, which, which is a gated community or apartment, which is more than 20 units. Or if the each, if you, each unit is 2000 square meter or above, whichever is lower, they should have their own STP. And similarly, the commercial buildings for, for 2000 square meter, or the educational institution, even the schools or colleges, if wherever it is 5,000 square meter and above area, they should have their own STP. And if what happens when you don't do it, there'll be a high, very high penalty for that in, uh, in the stages. For three months, it will be a little lesser and then it goes to higher. So until you set up the STP. So what we do at Biome is we follow DVAT system. DVAT system, it is, uh, it is designed only for the houses where there are maximum 10 people in a family. Because what DVAT works better for this amount of whatever the wastewater gets for this amount of water. So we don't take up the design for black water. So this treatment is only for the gray water, not from the toilet waters. And it can be located either on the ground or on the uh, terrace also, depending on your uh, place space availability. Here also, we don't, uh, we don't re require any much of energy here. Only the pump, you'll have to pump the treated water to the terrace or if you are setting up on the terrace, you will have to pump the water before the treatment. Only this is uh, this is required. Otherwise, there is no energy or any chemical or anything you will have to put. Nothing is required in this. So the steps comes here is, first one is inspection chamber. Here, it ha what happens here is, the solid particles will get settled here. First, uh, the bigger solid particles. And then it goes to the baffle tank where it will have several baffles, like vertical slabs. So it passes, one will get filled, the water flows to the first tank, it will settle here. One, this gets filled, it will goes to the next tank, Sm some much smaller particles will settle here and then it passes through the next and next. By the time it reaches to the last um, a chamber, it is clear, almost clear, without the physical sediments. And then it flows to the planted gravel filter. This is called reed bed. Here, it, you will have big jelly stones and small jelly stones, that is 40 mm uh, gravels and 20 mm gravels. And the reeds are planted here. These reeds are the ones which uh, is grown near the lakes and all. So that is planted here on top. So water passes in this, it stays here for a while. So the water, the plants absorb the nutrients from the uh, water. So, and then it flows to the polishing pond. It is a shallow pond. It is, and it is kept open. The difference here is the baffle tank is closed on top, but in the polishing pond, it is kept open and the shallow so much, the more oxygen is uh, added into the water and it is fresh and uh, it removes the order in it. So some of the system, how it looks, you can see here, right side, you, uh, here you can see the grease trap and inspection chamber, and this is the reed bed. And then it goes to the collection tank or polishing pond. From there, you can pump it up to the 
up to your terrace. And also here, you, you, you cannot be making it a small, larger storage. This treated water should be used in a day or two maximum. So these are the setups to show you how it looks. If you set it up on the terrace, it, it will have multiple chambers. So water flows from one to one next to each other, one to the next, and then water gets filtered. And the last one will have the sand bed filter for uh, clear, make it clear. And also uh, it should be separated from the other portion of the terrace. If you are doing the rainwater harvesting there, then this the water which is falling on this portion cannot be collected. Then it will get contaminated, right? So the it should be kept separate and and used in a day or two, as I said. So and also you can make it look beautiful. It not it need not be a only the functional. Uh, you, you need not look at only the functional aspect of it. This is also, this is the polishing pond where they have made it like a lily pond. This is uh, considered, you can look at it as beautification as uh, aspect. And this is another example, which is a house in Agra. They have done it this way. So it can be customized as per the space availability. It need not be at one single line, all the three uh, uh, treatment systems like baffle tank or the reed bed polishing pond. It can be placed accordingly, L-shaped or narrow treatment spaces. And this is the one in the terrace, they have done it one in, in one of the houses in Hebal. This is the storage tank where it will get collected and then it is connected to the flush in the toilets. And this is under construction. Here you can see the grease trap or the inspection chamber. And from there it comes here. This is a reed bed. And then it comes to the, uh, sorry, baffle tank and then reed bed and comes to the polishing pond. So this is what we follow. Like, I'll just to summarize it once again. So the water, you should be, you should not be using any chemical um, detergent or shampoos, uh, those kind of things. There are uh, organic shampoos or detergents available in the market. You can switch it, uh, switch to that. There, uh, it is good for the health also. And also it, it is good to treat the water and use it. So, once you are using it, it will be easier for the treatment. So in the treatment, it comes to the stages are baffle tank where the solid particle gets filtered. And then it goes to the reed bed where the nutrients are absorbed from the water. And then it goes to the polishing shallower pond where uh, more oxygenization happens and it is good to use. Then it will get pumped to the storage tank on the terrace. There, from there, you can connect it to your toilets and for the gardening. Yeah, and one more uh, point to be noted here is this is only the secondary treated water, which we should not be using it for recharging the groundwater. It cannot be used. It is only used for gardening or flushing. So, and also uh, when, you, when you have the concern of you will not be able to switch it to the organic products or maintain it. There are also many commercially available um, systems are available. And they, they are called mini STPs or house STPs where you can just install it. They'll take care of any kind of water in your from your wastewater from your house, whether it can be from the flush toilets, flushed or uh, from the kitchen or the washing machine, anything, whatever the chemicals uh, detergent you use that doesn't matter in that in it so it gets treated uh, it will treat any kind of water maybe here the cost might be little higher but as per the you can you can choose as per your comfortable uh, comfort and uh, your choice you can decide here also they have the uh, uh, this masonry reed bed system where it needs the organic particles for the plants to absorb it. 
so they have there are many companies who give service who do this mini stps so accordingly you can choose on if you want to go for the dvat system what biome follows which is less of uh, energy if energy consumption and eco friendly system so this is how the commercial stp looks like this is just to, we are not promoting any of the brands or anything this is just for you to get an idea how how it will look and how much it will how much space it will take and uh, accordingly you can decide yeah so this is is the presentation then if you have any questions you can go oh. Yeah. Thanks, Bhavani. Um, so, if anybody has any questions, we can address. Yes, Hi, uh, this is Vishal here. here. Um, I had a quick question. Uh, so, uh, for the DWAT system, uh, what is the maintenance that would be needed? Uh, one is that your baffle tank. So, it, it all depends on the kind of uh, grey water that is generated. Uh, it your uh, If if the water is more or less, uh, you know, it doesn't have too many, too many solid residues, then uh, the baffle tank, is bit, uh, which is where the, uh, uh, you know, the solid material settles, that needs to be cleaned every once in a while. So if you don't have too much residue, then it doesn't, you can clean it, say, maybe once in two years or three years. Uh, because unlike black water, which has got a lot of solid organic residue, um, gray water doesn't so uh, whereas for instance uh, so it all depends upon for instance if you decide to connect your kitchen water to the gray water system then the amount of solid material that is there in the gray water increases because from the kitchen sink you'll have much more you know the food residue will be there in the wastewater so then the you probably will need to clean it every year maybe depending on you know what, because what happens is as the solid uh, material accumulates, uh, there will be a fair amount of methane and uh, other, uh, you know, uh, sulfur dioxide and all of that generated, which causes odor. So, which is why you kind of need to clean it more often. And then your reed bed, you have to keep an eye on your reeds. Uh, it may, uh, you know, uh, like, the uh, system should be placed in an area where good sunlight is available for the plants to be healthy, uh, for the plants to grow. Uh, and if, if for instance, if, you, if, if the chemical load in your grey water is very high, so the, the plants don't know what to do with the chemicals because chemicals are uh, man-made, right? They are, nature doesn't know how to deal with it. That's why it kind of accumulates wherever it is um, discharged. So... Uh, and sometimes the chemicals may actually end up killing the reeds if, if the chemical load in your grey water is high, which is also another reason why we recommend that you switch to organic uh, soaps and detergents and shampoos because that they contain organic compounds which the uh, plants can absorb and uh, denature. And they know how to deal with organic compounds. They don't know what to do with uh, chemicals, uh, man-made chemicals. So... Um, if, if there's too much of chemical load, then your reed beds, reeds may die. If your system is uh, left unused for a period of time, for instance, if you decide that you know you want to go on a vacation, uh, your when you come back, your reeds will be dead, uh, unless you have asked your gardener to also water the reed bed along with the rest of your garden. So uh, that's the maintenance and and. Like any plant, you know, all plants, they'll have a lifespan and after some time they'll start dying, right? So that also can happen. And so basically that, uh, like how you would kind of keep an eye on your garden and remove the dead plants and put in new ones, you'll have to do that for your reed bed. And a collection tank also needs cleaning every once in a while. And um, it, it like as long as you're, you know, if, if you're using organic detergents, and your reed bed is doing well, the collection tank will not, I mean, it'll, it'll not really have anything inside that requires uh, large, uh, you know, or, or 
too much of maintenance. Um, if if for uh, if on the other hand again the chemical load is high and uh, if if your you know your reeds are not adequate, if there are few reeds, then the so the reeds are basically the ones that clean the water. So the more reeds you have, the better the cleaning of the water. And if that is inadequate, then there will, you know, the collected water itself may not, uh, you know, it, it may be quite uh, turbid and it may smell, etc. So those are the... Uh, I'm Vishal here. Thank hmm. you. Um, is one of the uses of this uh, treated grey water, could it be to you, could it be used to wash vehicles, for example, wash cars and stuff? And you can, uh, yeah, that will depend on the, uh, you know, quality. You'll have to check the quality of the treated water. Uh, if you feel uh, that it is adequate to wash vehicles, you can go ahead and use it. Do generally people, your users, what is the feedback been? Has it been used successfully for washing uh, cars, you think? Or is that very... Uh, I'm not able to uh, tell you because we haven't uh, actually received that kind of feedback because most most of the time, I mean, the at least the systems that we have installed, people use it uh, and even only the, the that rooftop one which you saw, only that person has been using it for flushing. Literally everybody else uses it only for watering the garden. So we yeah. haven't had... Um, an example of a client who has used the treated grey water for washing vehicles. But it can be done. You can use it for washing vehicles and you can use it for washing the yard, etc. You know, the uh, the yeah. compound. Uh, because it does not, uh, that's a waste of fresh water too. Because Thank basically you. what you're trying to do is get rid of the dust. The, do these reeds have to be a, of a certain variety or can they just be any plant? Uh, no, so uh, the thing is, these reeds are planted in the gravel. They are planted in the, you know, the jelly stones. They are plant yeah. They're not planted in soil. It's a constructed right. reed bed. It's got. It's made of cement or concrete, and in that you have to put several layers of jelly, and the and the nutrients for these plants come from the uh, grey water. Huh. So can so, any other, any kind of plant survive no, this? That's, that's have to what I'm trying to tell you, that every, every, any and every kind of plant will not be able to grow huh. in this. Uh, it will yeah. not be able to grow. So you have to uh, get reeds that are, the, these are very specific reeds that you will find along, say, you know, the local lake um, borders. Okay, for instance, there's this variety called taifa, uh, which are, the reeds are also used to make baskets, etc., uh, I'm not very sure of the look. Uh, something with J, I think. Oh, sorry, missed what you said, uh, Uma. What was that? Uh, uh, local name for Taifa? Jondu. Jondu, Jondu. Jondu, Jondu, Jondu. Yes, Jondu, yeah. Jondu. It's right. called Jondu. Then there is one. So in, in one of the pictures that Bhavani showed in the, the system that is on the ground, there are these uh, you know, uh, plants which have got a green flower like uh, leaves on top. They are called Chinese umbrella. Where, where do we the... procure these from? Man? So some of them can be procured from nurseries. Like for example, canna. Canna is a very common garden plant. It's got those banana-like leaves and it's got bright red, bright yellow flowers. Right. Those are, uh, many people... Uh, um, you know, they prefer to use canna because especially uh, when you have a ground-based system, it can be incorporated as part of your garden. So yeah, the canna looks very yeah, nice yeah. In, in, the, in the garden. So a lot of people use canna, which you can get in any nursery. So these are the uh, three most commonly used and more popular ones. There are other reeds also that uh, can be used uh, in this uh, reed bed system. Uh, one one final question, ma'am. The uh, polishing tank, uh, which is like the third stage, I suppose, um, mm -hmm. does that tank, because it has to be kept open, um, is there odor around that? I mean, is that tolerable in a confined uh, smaller plots? There could be neighbors and things like that who may complain about it. Have you? It will not. Uh, so if you use organic uh, soaps and detergents, the odor will be very manageable. The odor is usually what we have noticed is that the odor is more in cases where uh, people continue to use chemical detergents and, uh, you know, the usual branded detergents and soaps, etc. 
uh, I, it's because of the collecting of those chemicals and probably some breakdown that happens due to the exposure to sunlight that the smell comes. But generally, if you keep it open, the odor dissipates because it's open, right? So, and it doesn't, uh, it, it's not, it's barely noticeable. And especially if you make it a uh, larger, like the picture that was shown, like a pool, you know, something that's shallow and uh, larger in surface area, that will definitely, that will obviously cause some evaporative loss of water, but uh, there's no smell usually. And in that also you can put some lily plants, etc., which again will further uh, absorb more nutrients and it, the water will water can and some people even put uh, fishes guppy etc guppies etc to ensure that mosquito larvae don't breed in there thank you okay yeah. so yeah there is another question in the chat can we use treated kitchen water for surface irrigation yeah yeah, yeah, yeah I was uh, I, sorry uh, Uma, I can i just it. mention I'll one thing it. sure sure go ahead please yeah, uh, in terms of maintenance of these reed beds, um, you should also take care of the reed and not let that fall back into the beds. In the sense, when the plants die, that needs to be removed so that you make sure there is no odor. Is that correct? Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so there are two questions in the chat. One is, can we use untreated kitchen water for surface irrigation? Uh, you definitely can. You can, provided again the uh, the you know the wastewater does not have too much of uh, chemical soap in it. Uh, like for instance, if you're using those uh, soap bars that are available or um, any of the commercially branded uh, dishwash liquids or uh, powders they will add a chemical load in the water and that may you know be detrimental to the plants um and the uh, but if you are using organic uh, dishwashers no issues at all the food residue in the plant in, in the wastewater in the kitchen uh, water will not harm the plants they will be in fact seen as uh, nutrients that can benefit the plants. So you can, for instance, if you have a large garden plot where you can just channel the kitchen wastewater into the garden, you can do that. And that's what uh, in the uh, in the types of treatment systems we should, there was one called a banana circle. That's exactly what is done. So a banana, a banana circles, I mean, they are, the, that's a term that is used in permaculture and that's in that, basically, all the uh, waste, right, this can be even used for black water. Some people even do it with black water, where they channel the wastewater into, um, you know, a shallow basin or a, a shallow um, pond-like structure, which is completely covered with a lot of dry leaves and branches and garden waste and all of that. So no water shows above that. And uh, it's it, there's a, you know, there's a shallow bund around and on that, you have a lot of plants growing, especially water-loving plants like banana, coconuts, etc., which need watering every day. And because the sewage water will be coming out, uh, your black water and gray water, I, I mean, we haven't, uh, I mean, I, I personally have not seen a system with, uh, where black water is being used for this, but I have heard that it can be, so it has to be done very carefully if you're considering black water. But gray water can be very easily used to, you know, you can directly send it to your, uh, you, you know, where you're growing bananas and coconuts if you have a large garden plot or if you have a, a farm, for instance. You can do that. Uh, the next question is how to check quality of treated water? Well, you have labs which will uh, give you, there is so the, uh, Bhavani showed the, the KSPC, NGT KSPCB guidelines for the quality of treated water. Uh, you can give a sample to, a, there are a lot of uh, water testing labs uh, across the city and everywhere. So you can give a sample of your treated water and, uh, you know, say that this is treated wastewater and they will check it. They'll have, the lab will have these standards and they will check it uh, according to that and let you know. And then based on the result, then you can decide if the quality is matching the standards or whether, uh, you know, you need to improve your system in some way. So, yeah, so the names of plants, Typha canna uh, and Chinese umbrella, Chinese umbrella. Oh, yeah, Bhavani has replied. 
Okay, uh, Seema is asking, what about hair? Does it decompose and what about shaving cream? Are there natural creams? Uh, okay, I am not very, I'm, I'm not very sure about natural shaving creams. Uh, I think hair is, so the thing is, it's, it's about, you know, it's about the quantity of hair. So if you have just, uh, you know, a few strands of hair, hair will decompose. It will take a longer time. It's just basically just keratin. So it will decompose. Uh, but it depends again on the system. For instance, if you have a banana circle and hair is going in that, no need to worry. It will just, you know, it will stop somewhere and it will get incorporated in the soil and it will decompose. But in your constructed system, if you have a lot of hair coming, okay, it can claw, it, it, it can clog somewhere in your baffle, uh, baffle tank, it can clog, clog your reed bed. So that is something that you have to be careful about. So uh, basically what is likely to happen is that it will settle in your baffle tank in a constructing system. So Uma, if I can answer the natural shaving cream thing. Yeah, yeah, uh, go ahead, please answer, yeah. Yeah, so basically, uh, yes, you do get natural shaving creams in the market. Uh, they are made mostly with similar to lotions uh, where these wax and certain fats are used along with water and uh, homogenized together. Uh, but uh, when you say natural, obviously the organic industry, uh, they do put some minimal number, amount of, uh, uh, you know, uh, what do you call preservatives. So this, this could be one of the one of the things that might stay back as residue in your uh, system uh, there are also ways of i mean uh, in the ancient times they used to use certain kinds of oils for this basically you need to make it uh, slippery enough for you to be able to shave that is the thing so you do have all of these you there are many options to explore thanks nilima that's why i was not aware of this is very nice but I just so, had one quick question. Uh, yes, please go ahead. Uh, and Pradeep, so, uh, so how long should the uh, grey water sit in those four chambers? So the, the usual, the residence time of the water in the whole entire system is about, is, is varies from 60 to 72 hours. That is from the time it enters the baffle tank, goes mm -hmm. through the reed bed and then, you know, the treated water is there in the uh, ta collection tank and or the polishing point and from there you are using it. So as Bhavani mentioned, in the uh, so finally what we see is so the once the it, it comes into the baffle tank and it starts going into the reed bed that all of that happens kind of automatically because once the uh, water reaches the uh, you know the outlet of the baffle inlet of the reed bed it automatically flows it flows through gravity. What is the thing that uh, we have to keep in mind is. Uh, how how much time the water stays in the polishing pond or the collection tank, the treated water collection tank. Mm -hmm. In that, it should not be there more than two days. Uh -huh. It should be used within two days. Okay. So I have one system right now. So the okay. water gets collected. Uh, the first uh, 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 phase of the water gets collected at the ground level. Hmm. Then I pump it to the uh, reed bed, like four reed beds, right? Like uh, when I pump it, all the, even uh, those, you know, those uh, uh, dirt and stuff like that also gets pumped and you don't have enough time for it to settle down. So it's already there in the fourth chamber. And uh, when you, when, when I wait and again pump some more water, some of, some of the dirt also gets into the uh, collection tank. I don't have a polishing tank. So I directly put it into the, uh, uh, into the syntax tank from where I need to use it for flushing. So after some time, I see that, uh, you know, there are some uh, particles that gets uh, starts getting clogged into my system. So I was thinking, uh, um, should I have to wait in those reeds for some more time for this for, for this to settle down? And every time you pump, there is like some uh, some there's some commotion in the in the chamber. So the particles rise up and uh, they sort of uh, get into the main chamber and I'm not able to use it for uh, um, actually for flushing so it starts clogging the system so i was thinking is there any other way and uh, the should i have to use different plants to in each chamber so it absorbs different sorts of uh, uh, minerals or only the reed bread is okay 
so uh, I'll, I I can uh, I'll answer the first question that you asked. So I think what is happening in your case possibly is that the water is not staying in the initial the the untreated water collection tank or the baffled tank that we call. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. not staying long enough in that. It's ne it oh. needs to wait for some time in that uh, chamber so that the solids can set in. So what happens is like when the water comes in, mm -hmm. there is turbulence, right? So whenever, yeah. so if if water is coming in, so generally in in any household, the water will come in. Most of the water will come in due at you know during the morning hours. Yeah. Right, because yeah. that's when all the activity uh -huh. happens in the okay. house. People have bath and you know the kitchen uh, kitchen work is going on if if kitchen water is also included in that etc yeah. right yeah. and uh during the afternoon hours it i mean it need it doesn't need to be there for a very long time but yeah. for a few hours at least the baffled tank should be calm without any turbulence yeah. so that the solids can settle to the bottom settle at mm -hmm. the bottom yeah. And then after that, you pump the, so the supernatant water that is there the, mm -hmm. the, the, after the settling happens. Yeah. That water should be pumped up to your reed beds. The reed beds are on the terrace, right? Yeah. yeah. After that, you pump it to the reed beds. And uh -huh. if you have those multiple vertical reed beds, it's good yeah. to actually put different, different types of uh, plants yeah. in each one so that, right. you know, uh, it, the cleaning becomes more efficient. And then pass yeah. it through the reverse sand filter and then collect it in your uh, collection tank. That is your polishing pond or your collection tank on the roof, uh, a syntax yeah. tank. And from there, and then it will become quite clean. So uh, yeah. this is the thing that you have to check. And also, if you have a reverse sand filter, it should not mm -hmm. actually allow any solid particles to enter your collection, your treated water collection tank. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, how long should it uh, sit in the reed beds, madam? Like those three, four chambers. Uh, once you pump from the ground floor, that will automatically move because they are uh, at, you know, they are arranged. So at the in... fourth chamber, how long should it? I mean, should I have to directly put it into my collection tank, or should I have to make it uh, wait for some time in these four chambers? Uh, no, no. It's see, once you pump it up, it will by gravity, it will automatically flow. Flow and uh, reach the uh, collection uh, tank. Also. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so, so I pump. Every... So, yeah, uh -huh. it will take its time. And for instance, if the volume is very high, for instance, uh -huh. okay, if the volume is very high, it will move faster. Uh -huh. Which is why we design when we design the system, we design it for a particular volume. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. and if the volume increases, say for instance, if it is if if the system is designed for say five people mm -hmm. in the house. Okay, and then you have another three people visiting you uh, mm. for a period of time. Okay, yeah, yeah. in that case, then you will notice that the quality of your treated water will be a little, uh -huh. it will not be as good as usual mm -hmm. because the volume of treated water getting into the system is higher yeah. and therefore it is not able to stay for whatever, you know, stay for the mm -hmm. required length of time or, or take the required amount of time to uh, you know, pass through the entire system yeah, yeah. to adequately treat the water. Okay, okay. Okay, so, so that's another thing that you need to keep in mind. So, for instance, if your family size has increased after mm -hmm. uh, setting up this system uh, and it was kind of designed for a particular size, yeah, uh, you may require some tweaking there. Yeah, yeah. So, are you saying, say, uh, like uh, I get, collect my water in the morning? Afternoon, when I pump, I pump all the water from my ground level to the chambers. That's what you're saying, right? I empty my uh, ground uh, water. Yes, water yes. I empty yeah, it Empty or at least you can pump up three quarts of the water, for instance. If you are, uh -huh. if if you if you have an apprehension that if you uh -huh. pump up everything, some yeah. solid particles will also go. Uh, yeah. In yeah. such case, you can leave a little bit of water at the bottom and then pump the remaining. Cool, cool, madam. And uh, these reeds, uh, you said they you plant it in the uh, jelly uh, jelly. Uh, yeah, in jelly right. stones. Yeah. But uh, other plants uh, like uh, uh, you know, like kana, can I put that also into the jelly thing? Or yes, can yes. I let it uh, float? No, in no, the water? no. You you cannot put soil in the constructed reeds. Or shall I let it float in the water in the grey water? Is no, it, no, it will not stay upright. No, true, true. there are only some only plants which have got that air bags. They'll be able to float, like your uh, uh, water hyacinth and yeah. 
uh, what is that other some water lettuce all of them have some air bags so uh -huh. they will float uh -huh. uh, you can you can put some of them also if you want yeah. but they also kind of uh, uh, you know you 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 get a lot of evaporative loss with them and uh -huh. winter lettuce water lettuce has the you know it's a little you know it, it both of them kind of in they they kind of grow very uh, yeah. um, profusely so you will have to kind of keep removing them from your reed beds so but yeah. if you want to use because i think in that um, in the picture that bhavani showed i think one of the reed beds has yeah. Water hyacinth in there. Yeah, yeah. So you can use them also. Water hyacinth, uh, water lettuce also can be used um, in the reed bed too. You in those will float in the water. Okay, so canna also I have to like uh, uh, embed it in. Yeah, yeah. Canna is a is a plant with roots. No, it's got a Correct. stem and all. That. So I have to put it so in the stem. Yeah, it you will have to plant it in the ground. Okay, okay, okay. Good, good. Thank yeah. you so much. Thanks. Yeah, so there is a question saying uh, for a family of five with garden area of 12 by 7 feet size, is it feasible to directly root untreated kitchen? So 12 by 7 feet seems like a very small garden. And um, you can try. I really, I'm. it depends on the quantity of, of kitchen water that will be uh, generated. Because, uh, yeah, the amount of kitchen water, I mean, from the, from what I can imagine here, I'm just imagining the size of the garden and the quantity of kitchen water that will be generated for a family of five, there will be a certain amount, right? And I feel that that water that will be generated will be too much for the garden that is of 12 by 7. So I that's my feeling, but you will have to check it out. Then there is a, uh, another question which says, is the combination of DWATs and any commercial solution more effective, less maintenance? Actually, you could say, for instance, if you if you are looking for, uh, you know, for instance, if you have a house somewhere in the outskirts, which is not connected to um, the sewage network, and you, you have, you know, you need to kind of treat your black water and your gray water, you can actually go for, one of the uh, nowadays you have a lot of uh, commercial systems that are being set up for individual houses okay where um, the it's a, it's a basically a small scale stp a, a, you know tiny stp which can uh, treat your um, gray water and your black water and give you treated water for use in the flush in the um, in the garden just like an stp does in an apartment complex or a villa layout so uh, it, instead of having a combination of DWATs and a commercial solution, you could actually go for the commercial solution itself. Is uh, I mean that that's what kind of strikes me as because it's it's better to have uh, you know that it, you know if if you if your intention is basically to or uh, get treated water, and if both the systems are giving you treated water, why not have just one system? That's the thing. I, if you live in the city and you want to, you know, treat your gray water, you can then, you know, your black water can go into the sewage network and you can treat your gray water and reuse the treated water. But if you are somewhere uh, outside, outside the sewage network and you need a treatment system, then you can actually go for a home level STP. That would actually work better is what I would imagine. So uh, the, okay, the, should we have a simple fat trap or micron filter to remove oil and food particles? Yes, you can do that. Alternatively, can we route this to a ground recharge pit? If not, what needs to be done to enable this? Okay, so uh, as Bhavani mentioned, secondary treated uh, wastewater is not, uh, you cannot use it for groundwater recharge. Okay, there are three types of water uh, that you cannot use for groundwater recharge. One is secondary treated STP water or uh, gray water. Second is swimming pool backwash water. And the third is RO reject water. Okay, now uh, the reason for all this is because they all contain contaminants and they can pollute the groundwater. So you cannot use any of these for groundwater recharge. On the other hand, if you have, uh, say suppose you live in an apartment complex or a um, uh, villa layout which has set up a, a, an STP that treats water or wastewater to the to tertiary levels. Now tertiary treatment is basically rendering the wastewater portable. You can drink that water. You can you can you know cook with that water. It's it's like RO water basically. 
it's as clean as that and uh, the, the only thing there is a uh, you know the, the that feeling of oh this is treated waste water but otherwise the water itself you test it it will come back the test parameters will be that of absolutely clean water you can use it for anything you wish and that you can definitely use for groundwater recharge but even then even then you have to get permission from the karnataka pollution control board because they have to certify they have to see that they will they will probably ask you to you know uh, submit uh, regular test reports of the tertiary treated the water uh, to ensure that you are using absolutely clean tertiary treated water for groundwater recharge so that is allowed but secondary treated uh, waste water whether it's gray water or black water or, or sewage is not allowed for groundwater recharge yeah uh, this pramod madam i just asked that question thanks for the reply for the tertiary treated water what is the kind of setup we need what you explained is for secondary right now whatever we just went through is for secondary yes, yes. treated water yeah yeah, yeah. tertiary so there, what is the difference and yeah, yeah please so there are many more processes involved it's a much uh, technologically more complex process because it will involve removing all the dissolved uh, materials in the water um and it will also uh, involve uh, removing the pathogens so it is a more co technologically more complex process so it will have okay, an and whatever today in the bwssb htp plants uh, i think uh, the BWSSB, they claim that we can take out the, we can get tankers to take the water from their HTPs for use. So that is tertiary treated, is it? Whatever BWSSB, HTP plants, the output. Uh, the BWSSB's HTPs, some are, they do have some HTPs which treat the water to a tertiary uh, level. For instance, Kaban Park has an HTP which treats the wastewater to tertiary standards. Um, okay. I don't know exactly how many uh, uh, Suma, Nilima, any idea? How many BWSSB uh, STPs are there which treat to tertiary levels? But most of them treat to secondary levels. But secondary treated okay. uh, wastewater can be used for, uh, you know, for watering gardens and things like that. So instead of using uh, borewell water, you know, many layouts uh, and even uh, even BBMP parks and all they can they probably are getting in this crisis I, I'm not very sure probably getting treated water for watering their gardens etc so um, I don't know if you are asking about whether BWSSB is providing treated water tankers for yes yes actually i saw i mean a video where the chairman right has asked i mean he has opened up that option for uh, anyone uh, to pick up uh, the treated water from the htp there's a in the interview he has called that out clearly but again i don't know the the modalities and all but i yeah. have seen that yeah yeah I've yeah can that. i ask, answer that yeah there are facility from bwssb uh, wherever the stp setups are there from there you can pick up secondary treated water for your gardening and flush secondary use uh, it it should be at least minimum 6 to 7 kilometers from their facility so they will supply it with some minimal cost right and I have seen in that interview that they claim that it can be reached, uh, recharged to the ground. But anyway, I mean, uh, as you said, uh, it is not allowed as per the regulations. But I have seen in that interview that they also recommend it. Maybe it may be tertiary treated, maybe in some cases. Yeah, could be. So what they may have been talking about is the use of secondary treated wastewater to fill lakes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So lakes, if you if you see the lakes in Bangalore, in and around Bangalore, the basically they are irrigation tanks, right? In Karnataka, they are man-made irrigation tanks. They are not very deep. Uh, they are maximum yeah. about uh, say 12, 15 feet deep, not deeper than that. And so that is a pretty shallow depth. So if you fill, uh, um, you know, if, if you fill these, if any of the lakes are dry and if they are filled with uh, secondary treated wastewater. Uh, the as the water percolates into the ground, the layers of soil will clean the water. So that is okay. what probably is being indicated when they say use of uh, uh, treated water for groundwater recharge. Whereas if you think of recharge wells, the recharge structures that we 
um, recommend being made to uh, you know a, a human intervention to send uh, rainwater back into the ground they are structures called recharge wells which are which need to be a minimum of 20 feet deep so now uh, 20 feet while the difference between uh, 15 and 20 feet may not seem much because it's only 5 feet my height is 5 feet so <laughs> you know that much of soil is still uh, you know lost that the filtration uh, advantage from that much of soil is lost if you put in a uh, you know secondary treated waste water into a recharge well that is 20 feet deep so which is why it is not uh, it's that is more likely to uh, you know uh, contaminate groundwater than if you put a uh, secondary treated waste water in a fairly shallow lake or tank which is max about uh, in its deepest part it may be about 10 or 12 feet deep that's the that's the uh, that, that that's possibly what uh, he was talking about yeah i just just have one more question madam thanks for that so if we we have a bore well in our house i was talking about the 12 by 7 garden size right, right. so we have a bore well which is away from the garden so hmm. if we make the garden a little bit deeper say one or two feet deep and hmm. somehow manage to hold the water from the kitchen so that with with they say gravel as you along with some plants if we have gravel that will still that is allowed right i mean it, it as you said we can route the kitchen water to the garden and that will filter the soil and the gravel will filter and it should not contaminate the ground water right in a long term okay, is that yeah. correct using yeah you can use uh, untreated kitchen water to water the garden that's not the problem at all you can okay, you, okay. you can use it but my uh, based on your question what i was saying was that i kind of my in my imagination the quantity of kitchen correct. water generated for a family of five people will be too correct, much correct. for a garden of 12 by 7 12 by 7 is like a small room right like probably like this room correct 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 roughly roughly on that size correct correct yeah, so around. i feel that much water will be too much for a garden of this size that will fit into this room that's can what i can it be modified madam the depth so that it can still hold that i mean is that feasible then your then your garden will become very soggy you know the, the, there'll be too much okay. water and you know the, there'll be too much water for the um, the space and the soil so then the plants will start dying because of uh, too much water this this garden is what i'm talking is actually on the I mean it's kind of the bwss peep in the road it's not a garden within the plot so our is like 30 by 40 I mean, i'm just going into a little bit of details but uh, it is actually on the road i mean uh, we wait for this fence it's it's part of the this one it's for this how it is currently yeah. all i can say is you can try and see try and see for okay. a few days and see how the place responds so in dry season you may not have a problem all the water will get so will you know it will soak in and it will evaporate and all of that but right. in rainy season you it will not be needed also so you can try and it do you provide yeah, yeah sorry sorry go ahead yeah yeah all i'm saying is that you can try it out and see that's all and and do you provide such services i mean consultancy services for such kind of work uh, madam i mean uh, we do design uh, we do we design uh, gray water treatment systems the tra- the pictures that bani showed okay. in the presentation yeah. those are okay. systems that we have designed the the you know the way specific client systems that pictures that was those are all designs okay okay thanks thanks madam thanks okay. yeah So, uh, so Vishal is asking, can the contacts of some of the private operators please be shared? Uh, uh, Neelima, uh, can I request or Bhavani, can I request you to share the urban waters, uh, wastewater operators link in the chat? So, and or maybe as a reply to Vishal's question, then uh, Ramya yeah. is asking, many people use RO reject water. uh for mopping etc is this okay because mopping aside the mopped ro reject water eventually does go down the drain that's fine that's fine because um, uh i mean you can use you can use ro reject water for mopping in fact uh, if uh, one of you uh, nilima one of you could also take that um, the shubhas video where she has what she has done what shubha shubha has done a shubha is our senior colleague what she has done is the ro water goes into a small tank above the kitchen sink 
and from there the that water comes into the kitchen sink and then that water is uh, arrow reject water is being used to wash uh, dishes so uh, there's a small video that she has made of that so that will be shared in the chat so you can take a look and it's it's very easy to install you can get a local plumber to do it for you and uh, you know there were there uh, uh, thereby you are actually you know you're you're saving that much of fresh water for your washing dishes so yes ramya it's perfectly okay you can use ro reject water for mop mopping and it doesn't really matter it goes into the drain uh, where it will um, you know like in the dry season uh, it won't even reach the nearest water body is very likely dry up on the way if there is uh, no other water in the drain uh, in the rainy season it will be diluted so it's not a big deal uh, seema says i'm not sure i understand can ro water uh, is it part of grey water recycling so ro uh, is a uh, see uh, the uh, reverse osmosis system is like a it's a system of tertiary treatment you can think of it like that okay so it's a system of tertiary treatment which really cleans the water and removes literally everything from the water so the water that comes out is absolutely pristine it's all it's like pure h2o almost so it's not uh, i mean a gray water is waste water ro water can be ro technology a reverse osmosis can be used to uh, treat any waste water and the resultant that you get is very clean water i i hope that answers your question then how to request for an stp for our layout okay uh, this is a little bit more involved so you'll have to do some research uh, so um, uh, there is an online magazine called citizen matters and they actually have uh, did a series of articles on uh, the types you know it, uh, it's in it's, it's in a fair amount of detail which talks about how to determine what kind of an stp is needed for your apartment complex that is because you have apartment complex of different sizes different kinds the space availability differs so uh, for different uh, you know sizes uh, of apartment complexes different technologies are more appropriate so this series of uh, citizen matters articles can actually uh, you know i would recommend that you go through that you can um, uh you know you can go online search uh, citizen matters stps and you'll get a series of articles please go through them and they'll help you decide what kind of stps to set up and uh, from the from our the link that uh, i think bhavani has shared the link from that itself you'll get wastewater treatment vendors so from wastewater treatment vendors you can choose you can you can take quotations from some of them they'll come and see and give you Uh, after you determine the type of stp or the technology that is most appropriate for you and you can then go ahead and set it up and then there is a whole process you have to get um, you know uh, permission to set up an stp and then permission to operate it and all of that is there so it's it's a long process uh, then uh, you meant ro waste water we are using the ro water for drinking so are you uh, seema are you asking whether you can put the ro waste water into your grey water treatment system is that the question yes yes that's the question whether I, you uh, know because there ro does it hmm. can it just be used for plants i think it's not so the question is now either where to use the ro waste water or of course i'm also looking for a that's a separate question which is you know looking for an alternate to the ro system altogether because that whole water management is quite difficult since so right. much of it gets wasted you know and only yeah yeah so that is the question whether it can be part of the gray or is it and i think you've sent a video about what to do with ro water so that also yeah you be... could actually yeah so bhavani has shared that so that yeah. would be something that would really reduce your volume because you can use it for dishwashing yes. you can use yeah. it for washing yeah. you can use it for mopping you can use it to wash the car you can why you know if you live in an independent ah. you can use it to uh, you know wash your um, compound um you can uh, possibly dilute it with some fresh water and use it to water your plants because okay. Okay. the ro reject water by itself if it has a high so the thing is to check the tds in fact in the video shubha mm. showed how to check the tds of the ah okay water. 
and if it is not i think if it is uh, within 1000 uh, ppm you uh you to use it for plants the plants will not suffer too much okay okay oh that's easy okay that that i can do yeah uh bisha okay. it's not gray it's, it doesn't say gray water system it says waste water treatment vendors you will have to look for that right okay yeah then the filters you have to choose bengaluru in the cities and then you have to choose waste water treatment vendors in the uh, when the the lower filter so what is the process to request for an inspection from biom for feasibility or design of a grey water treatment system for an already built up small individual house of 1200 square feet what is the ball ballpark cost if any for the inspection alone so uh mr pramod i would request you to uh, you know share your email id so we will uh, send you a questionnaire we'll need some information from you and then we will send you our uh, proposal for how we can help you out. Yeah, so, thanks, thanks. yeah maybe after this question and answers i'll uh, just explain about the consultation so whoever is wants to contact us later contact individually for the consultation or more implementation sure. details right yeah yeah i think there aren't any other questions in the chat is does anyone have any other doubts or questions we can address that and then uh, bhavani can describe the services Okay, ah, uh, go ahead, Bhavani. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, when you when you do it, this is only the knowledge part. How to do, how what to do, and all. Then for the individual implementation system, so you can contact us individually. You can write to us, ah, uh, on email, or you can contact me either or Rajni for. Uh, Uh, to uh, continue with the consultation. So first, as Uma said, we'll send out a questionnaire. Looking at the questionnaire and their uh, details and what is the amount of work we need to do and all that, we will send out the charges for you. So this will have a visit, discuss with you, and then uh, give you the design of implementation. What what should be the size of baffle tank and reed bed. uh yeah according to the number of people staying there and the amount of waste water generated the system needs to be designed so accordingly we can do that so yeah this is just uh, for the as a information about the consultation thanks bhavani um are there any other questions right thanks everyone for making time to attend the session and i hope you found it useful uh you can get in touch with us if you have any further questions you can write to water at the rate of biome b i o m e dash solutions dot com and uh, we'll be happy to help you out with any questions that you may have I just uh, type out the email ID here. Yeah, I've done it. Oh, you've done it. Okay, yeah. great. Right. Uh, thank. You. Okay. You're most welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for attending. Uh, so whereabouts are your is your organization um functioning out of, ma'am? The main. Our office is in Vidyaranyapura. Nice. But uh, we don't. So the uh, we have we are a combination of an architecture team and a water team. So the architecture team sits in the office, and the water team works out of home, as you can I see, see. in my house. Right. Right. So yeah, and we do our site visits, and the rest of the work we do at home. We do calls on Google Meet or Zoom uh, sure. when we need to discuss anything. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a nice weekend. Everyone, bye. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you.